You were against same-sex marriage, now you're for it. You defended President Obama's immigration policies, now you say they're too harsh. You supported his trade deal dozens of times, you even called it the gold standard. Now, suddenly, last week, you're against it. Will you say anything to get elected? Well, actually, I have been very consistent over the course of my entire life. I have always fought for the same values and principles. Do you think New York State should recognize gay marriage? No. No? Okay. I believe that marriage is not just a bond, but a sacred bond between a man and a woman. I have uh, not uh, supported same-sex marriage. I have supported civil partnerships and uh, contractual relationships. I support marriage for lesbian and gay couples. I support it personally and as a matter of policy and law. So you're saying your opinion on gay marriage changed, or you changed your mind? <laughs> Just you know, I really, I have to say, I think you are um, being very persistent, but you are playing with my words and playing with what is such an I'm just trying to clarify issue. so I can understand. No, I don't think you are trying to clarify. I think you're trying to say that, you know, I used to be uh, opposed and now I'm in favor and I did it for political reasons and that's just flat wrong. So let me just state what I feel like you are implying and repudiate it. I have a strong record. I have a great commitment to this issue and I am proud of what I've done and the progress we're making. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm sorry, I, I just want to clarify what I was saying. No, I, I was saying that you maybe really believe this all along, but, you know, believed in gay marriage all along, but felt for political reasons America wasn't ready yet and you couldn't say it. That's what I was thinking. No, that, no, that is not true. It really is great how long you've supported great gay marriage. Yes. I, I could have supported it sooner. Well, you did it pretty soon. Yeah. Could have been sooner. Fair point. <laughs> Just uh, in July, New Hampshire, you told the crowd you, quote, take a backseat to no one when it comes to progressive values. I take a backseat to no one when you look at my record of standing up and fighting for progressive values. Last month in Ohio, you said you plead guilty to, quote, being kind of moderate and center. Do you change your political identity based on who you're talking to? No. I think that, uh, like most people that I know, I have a range of views, but they are rooted in my values and my experience. You know, I get accused of being kind of moderate center. I feel guilty. Just for the record, are you a progressive or are you a moderate? I'm a progressive. There have been questions about my email, so I want to address that directly. I'm here to give you an update on the FBI's investigation of Secretary Clinton's use of a personal email system during her time as Secretary of State. I opted for convenience to use my personal email account, which was allowed. They were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. I thought it would be easier to carry just one device. She also used numerous mobile devices to send and to read email. We went through a thorough process to identify all of my work-related emails. The lawyers doing the sorting for Secretary Clinton in 2014 did not individually read the content of all of her emails. And deliver them to the State Department. It's highly likely that their search missed some work-related emails. So that the emails were immediately captured and preserved. There was no archiving at all of her emails. That was uh, my obligation. I fully fulfilled it. They deleted all emails they did not produce to state, and the lawyers then cleaned their devices in such a way as to preclude complete forensic recovery. There were no security breaches. It is possible that hostile actors gained access. There is no classified materials. 110 emails contained classified information at the time they were sent or received. I'm certainly well aware uh, of the uh, classification uh, requirements and uh, did not uh, send classified material. Even if information is not marked classified in an email, Participants who know or should know that the subject matter is classified are still obligated to protect it. At the time, this didn't seem like an issue. None of these emails any kind of unclassified system. I represented Wall Street as a senator from New York, and I went to Wall Street in December of 2007, before the big crash that we had, and I basically said, cut it out. Quit foreclosing on homes. 
quit engaging in these kinds of speculative behaviors. Now, who's exactly to blame for the housing crisis? I think there's plenty of uh, blame to go around. Home buyers who paid extra fees to avoid documenting their income should have known they were getting in over their heads. Of course we have to deal with the problem that the banks are still too big to fail. We can never let the American taxpayer and middle class families ever have to bail out the kind of speculative behavior that we saw. But we also have to worry about some of the other players. AIG, a big insurance company, Lehman Brothers, an investment bank. There's this whole area called shadow banking. That's where the experts tell me the next potential problem could come from. So I'm with both Senator Sanders and Governor O'Malley in putting a lot of attention onto the banks. And the plan that I have put forward would actually empower regulators to break up big banks. I represented New York, and I represented New York on 9-11. When we were attacked, where were we attacked? We were attacked in downtown Manhattan, where Wall Street is. I did spend a whole lot of time and effort helping them rebuild. That was good for New York, it was good for the economy, and it was a way to rebuke the terrorists who had attacked our country. 9-11 was bad. I agree with that. Time and time again, you hear one thing in speeches, and then you see a campaign that has the worst kind of tactics reminiscent of the same sort of Republican attacks on Democrats. Well, I am here to say that it is not only wrong, but it is undermining core Democratic principles. Since when do Democrats attack one another on universal health care? I have looked at, I've looked at the legislation that Senator Sanders has proposed, and basically, he does eliminate the Affordable Care Act, eliminates private insurance, eliminates Medicare, eliminates Medicaid, TRICARE, Children's Health Insurance Program. Just because Senator Obama chose not to present a universal health care plan does not give him the right to attack me because I did. So let's have a real campaign. Enough with the speeches and the big rallies and then using tactics that are right out of Karl Rove's playbook. This is wrong, and every Democrat should be outraged. The Democratic Party in the United States worked since Harry Truman to get the Affordable Care Act passed. So shame on you, Barack Obama. It is time you ran a campaign consistent with your messages in public. Hillary Clinton's attempt to tout her foreign policy experience hounded her again on the campaign trail today. I made, uh, you know, I uh, made a, a mistake in, in describing it. She claimed she misspoke last week and was sleep deprived when she described landing under sniper fire in Tuzla, Bosnia, something that didn't happen. But CBS News has found several times in the past few months when Senator Clinton used the Bosnia trip to try to show her international experience. December in Iowa. We landed in one of those corkscrew landings and ran out because they said there might be sniper fire. I don't remember anybody offering me tea on the tarmac when that was happening. Then in February. The welcoming ceremony had to be moved inside because of sniper fire. And last week. I remember landing under sniper fire. We basically were told to run to our cars. Now that is what happened. Different accounts of your trip to Bosnia and I'm wondering if you could even clarify. I know you were called um, you know, ducking under sniper fire and, and Sinbad in his account who's on the trip, he, he said that the most dangerous part was remembering where he was going to eat next. Did, you He's actually, a comedian. You know, <laughs> He's a comedian. So you actually recall you know, hearing gunfire? And were you when, we were, when we were flying into Bosnia, we came in in an uh, evasive maneuver. Um, there was no greeting ceremony, and we basically were told to run to our cars. Now that is what happened. After CBS News video showed what really happened when she landed and greeted officials, Senator Clinton maintained there were risks, but explained to the Philadelphia Daily News why she was seen on the Bosnian tarmac greeting a young child if it was really so dangerous. I was also told that the greeting ceremony had been moved away from the uh, tarmac, but that there was this eight-year-old girl, and I said, well, I, have to, I can't can't rush by her. I've got to at least greet her. So I greeted her, I took her stuff, and I left. Now that's my memory of it. Good to see you. Once again, her memory doesn't match our videotape. <laughs> she and her daughter Chelsea lingered on the tarmac to greet U.S. So military bad. officials, took photos. There was the group of seventh graders on the tarmac, too. And then Senator Clinton walked to the armored vehicle where she did eventually 
dock and enter. It was one of the highlights of President Clinton's first term, passage of the North American Free Trade Agreement, also known as NAFTA. Critics blame NAFTA for the loss of manufacturing jobs in industrial states, including Ohio and Pennsylvania. Hillary Clinton helped get NAFTA approved. She held at least five meetings to strategize about how to win congressional approval. She helped the White House block opposition from labor and environmental groups, and she was the featured speaker at a crucial meeting. Participants in that event said, quote, her remarks were totally pro-NAFTA. There was no equivocation for her support for NAFTA at the time. You know, I have been a critic of NAFTA from the very beginning. My concerns about NAFTA expressed years ago have been well uh, documented and verified. I didn't have a public position on it. I have spoken uh, consistently uh, against uh, NAFTA. And if you look at what I have been saying, it has been consistent. I have been consistent. You can go back and look at from the very beginning. I was one of the voices in the administration warning about NAFTA. You said it was good on balance for New York and America in 2004, and now you're in Ohio, and your words are much different, Senator. The record is very clear. Well, I, I, you don't have all the records, because you can go back and look at what I've said consistently. Oh, I think that uh, everybody is in favor of free and fair trade, and I think that uh, uh, NAFTA is proving its worth. I think on balance, NAFTA is good for New York and America. Was NAFTA a mistake? NAFTA was a mistake to the extent that it did not deliver on what we had hoped it would. Your opponents are saying that that's really part of a larger pattern with you, that you often avoid taking firm positions on controversial issues. Mm -hmm. um, 